Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could join me for uh, this part, uh, part four of our SIG 33 15 centimeter heavy infantry gun by AFV Club and 135th scale. And in this video, we'll be doing the chipping, some panel liner, weathering, and a final reveal. In our last part, uh, we painted up uh, our gun, and now it's time to do a little bit of chipping. And for that, we're going to be using Vallejo uh, water-based acrylics. Now, this is German dark yellow, and we're going to start with that color first. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of that into my palette here. And then we're going to come back with some Vallejo white. And we're going to mix it about 50-50. Now this will give us the effect of lightening this color up. Give us a nice contrast there for showing wear and chipping areas here on our, on our gun. So I'm just going to use a fine paintbrush to do the chipping. Uh, oftentimes I use a sponge, but on this one there's so much detail on the model. Uh, I need to have a lot more control, so I'm just going to be using... Uh, the brush for that and as you can see here I've already gotten a little bit more than I wanted and we can just use a dampened uh, earbud or a q-tip or cotton swab <laughs> whatever you prefer and wipe that off Now it is really important that we go ahead and get that off as soon as possible it being a water-based acrylic it'll dry quickly and uh, then it'll be nearly impossible to remove now my goal here is just to add this chipping color uh, onto the parts of the model that either protrude or stick out or have sharp corners. Those are the areas that are going to catch uh, most of the wear. Also it being a towed uh, howitzer or towed gun, uh, you can imagine that uh, the wheels will kick up some rocks and there'll be some little dings here and there. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, wherever we add our chipping color that it does make sense or that it highlights uh, certain little areas uh, on the model itself. Uh, things like the corners here of the uh, gunner's uh, sight cover. That'll help bring that, uh, that one single part out a little bit so it doesn't blend in too much with the gun shield. And also maybe hit the hinges with it a little bit. Now another area we need to pay a special attention to is the uh, the chalk or the spade here on the uh, back of the gun chassis. And the reason why is because this is going to dig into the ground and of course anything that makes contact with dirt and uh, rocks and what have you uh, during the firing of the gun, the, the paint will be damaged there. And so I'm just going to take and paint that in. Um, this will just be our first color because we are going to do a uh, two or even three color uh, chipping effect. So as you can see I'm catching these uh, reinforcement ribs here a little bit and then right on the corners here of the center add a little bit of extra detail there, a little bit of emphasis there. And we'll move along uh, on the gun itself. Now you can also add scratches which I'm going to do here uh, in certain areas. Just want to make sure that we don't overdo it too much. It's really easy to over chip, uh, especially on a really bright light color like this German dark yellow. And that's our first color down. And you can see where I've added emphasis there, especially on the toolbox cover help bring that to life a little bit. Now we're ready for our next color and what we're going to be using there will be the Vallejo uh, German Panzer Grey. Now I really like German Panzer Grey. I use it uh, for a lot of things uh, especially tires and what have you. It's, it's not a color that will uh, really have a huge contrast difference um, if that makes any sense like like black is just black and panzer gray being a um, a little bit lighter will help keep the uh, the overall chipping effect here 
uh, more in sync, uh, subdued. I think maybe that's the word I'm looking for is subdued. And we're just laying this in uh, over top of our lighter chipping color, but we don't want to take it all the way to the edge of the lighter chipping color. We we kind of want that little boundary there to be there, uh, which shows the transition from the German dark yellow to the lighter chipping color, and then into the Panzer Gray. And we're starting to make some progress there. It's starting to look worn. <laughs> that's, that's what we're going after. And of course, we're going to do this on all the parts on the gun. Uh, here we're paying attention here to the breech block assembly. And uh, we'll also do this on the, uh, uh, the wheel assemblies um, as well. And we can't forget our elevation cylinders, which we'll be putting those on later on in the video. Now for me, the, uh, the hard part is to keep from overdoing this because you can get it, get it overdone and then uh, we'll just end up with like a spotted leopard look, <laughs> which might be an interesting camouflage pattern, but that's not really the goal right here. So now we're going to look at using some uh, flat steel testers enamel. Now this is a uh, solvent based or petroleum based product. And uh, as you can see here, I'm just adding it in uh, on the lower edge here uh, of where we've done the heaviest uh, Panzer Gray chipping. And this is going to represent uh, exposed metal, uh, which is expected here, especially on this uh, edge from uh, gun recoil and it digging into the ground. So we don't want to cover up uh, all of our gray, of course. Uh, we're just going to add this uh, uh, flat steel in. Now I'm not really dry brushing, uh, but I'm not using an extensive amount of paint. All right, It's not like we're trying to cover something up there. And now we can use some testers enamel thinner um, with a very clean brush, of course and just slightly dampened and the ideal here is just to blend uh, the edge I know you can't see it very good here uh, but I'm just blending the edge and pulling it down uh, the flat steel color uh, to kind of give it a smoother transition which is kind of what you would expect um, with it being ground away uh, same technique that we use when we did our uh, tools now, once all that dries, we need to go ahead and, and seal all that in. And I'm going to use the uh, Tamiya X22, thinned appropriately for your airbrush. And that gets us ready for our panel line accent color. Here we're using Tamiya Black. Now, this is also an enamel-based product. So I'm going to use this really, really thin pointed brush here. Uh, you can see the difference between the applicator brush that comes with the panel liner and the uh, brush that I'm going to use. Now this brush allows us to do a couple of things, uh, one of which, because of its longer bristles, it's going to hold a lot more product and uh, we'll be able to uh, add this panel liner without having to go back to the bottle as much. In addition, since it is very pointed, uh, we can uh, more target all this little detail that we would like to have emphasized. Now the panel liner, of course, will bring out those uh, uh, little cracks and areas and the rivets and the bolts and, and all that and kind of make them stand out a little bit. Otherwise, they just kind of get, uh, uh, they kind of blend in too much with the, with the paint color and we kind of lose that visual detail. And with the uh, Tamiya X22 clear coat, that being a gloss clear coat, you can see that it really aids in the panel liner's ability to find those little cracks and crevices there and just seep right around, right where we want it to go. And we'll just do up all of our parts for this. Now back to the enamel thinner. 
because the panel liner is a uh, enamel based product and a brush here to help clean up and of course a little paper towel which we'll use to uh, clean the excess amounts of uh, thinner and uh, also the panel liner that we're removing keep the brush as clean as possible that way we're not adding it back somewhere else and then we just use it more like an eraser and that'll just really clean these areas up hopefully you can see here uh, how easy it is and that enamel thinner will just pull that right off another thing I like to do is during this process of cleanup I like to walk away from the model and then come back with fresh eyes just to take a look at it and see what areas that I may have missed where there's too much panel liner that needs to be removed and now it's time to add our matte finish and here I'm going to use the Model Masters uh, Acryl uh, Flat Clear and we're going to coat all of our parts with that now since we've been spraying this uh, I need to go back and uh, in any areas where we have sliding and moving parts uh, we're going to clean those holes back out with the uh, drill bits and if you've seen the uh, the build videos uh, we did have to use these bits here to kind of ream these out uh, so that uh, we had all the functionality uh, of the of the gun carriage And this really helps to remove any overspray that's going to be inside those holes. And don't worry about uh, the inside of the holes not being painted. They're not going to be seen anyway, of course, because we're going to have a part inserted there. I also want to make sure that uh, I've done the same thing here with the mount uh, for the gun. And this is a pivot point. And if we really want the gun to elevate and to uh, depress... Uh, we can't have anything that's going to make that impossible to do. And here we're just going to check the fit. And it's always a good uh, idea to check the fit, even though we've done it a hundred times before, just to make sure before we commit uh, to assembling that uh, everything works the way we expect it to. Now, time to do some assembly. So this is the part that I've been sweating over. Uh, it is really, really a tight fit. Um, you just gotta press it in and get those pins to go right into those holes. I kind of think that maybe if I had it to do over, uh, I may have left one of those mounts off, painted it separately, and then glued it in right now in this final stage of assembly. Uh, that would have been a little bit easier, but uh, AFV Club, I guess, did think this out because it really does work. Uh, it is rather, rather nerve-wracking, though. You want to be careful that you don't break those pins off. And it is a tight fit. But it is important to get them in there. <laughs> and there we go. We didn't break anything. And as long as we manage to keep going and not breaking anything, um, hopefully the gun will elevate and everything will work exactly the way it's supposed to. Now we're going to look at installing these elevation cylinders. So there are two of them. And as you can see there, we have these really, really fine pins on either side of it at the pivot point. So we need to get uh, the one the inboard one uh, lined up into the hole and it is somewhat of a challenge but I do get it and then I'll just take my craft knife here and I'm just going to spread that bracket just a little bit and get it to pop into place and hopefully get, there we go so if we didn't break anything off it should be secure and it should be able to pivot right there. Yeah, that <laughs> works pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. Next up, we have to do the other cylinder as well, and it's the same process. And it was just much easier, I think, in the long run to uh, not completely assemble the gun. 
especially for painting purposes and the chipping and all that. Um, that would have been extremely difficult to do the painting, as you can see, uh, with these cylinders in place. With our cylinders installed, now we can install the, uh, the rams down into the cylinders there. And that is assembled to the connecting arm. And as you can see, it goes right onto that oblong pin inside the pivot point. And there is the socket that we're going to glue up to it. So we need to be very careful here. What we're going to use is a little bit of CA glue. I'm using medium CA glue here. Uh, super glue for others. And we're just going to put it right in the center of the connection point there on the arm. We need to pay special attention to it here because if we've got too much glue on it and it gets into that uh, uh, into the surface area there where the gun pivots, uh, that's going to be a problem. So we just clamp that into place for a second and let that CA glue set up. We need to make sure that we get it pressed in and hopefully we didn't put too much glue in there because if we did <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> So now to check it out, there we go. So that elevation arm works, and the ram goes in and out of the cylinder. We're in good shape. So now we're going to do this same thing with the opposite side. And the connection points are exactly the same. The only difference is that uh, the elevation arm on this side has an extended pin on it, which is where the gunner sight is going to go. Once again, just very little glue right in the center. And I got to move the CA glue away so I don't stick my arm in it. Uh, and then we're just going to rotate it up into place. And just fit it onto that little extension that's inside that pivot point and just press that together. And it doesn't take long for CA glue to set up. And hopefully, um, if we've done everything the way we're supposed to have done it, uh, it should work just fine. And there we are. So those elevation arms are securely attached and the rams are working. They go in and out of our cylinders. <laughs> I'm happy. So now we have our gunner sight and it has a pin right there. And that keeps the gunner sight in place. It doesn't rotate with the gun. I'm just going to press that into the little socket that it goes into. And make sure that it's seated all the way. And I'm just going to use a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin to seat down in around that pin and anchor it into its mount. And so the gunner sight stays in place. And then the gun, as you can see, we can move the gun, depress it, or elevate it, and the gunner's sight stays right where it's supposed to. Yeah, I'm liking this. <laughs> it's nice when everything works. And there are a lot of moving parts on this kit, so we want to be careful and keep as much functionality as we can. So now uh, we can attach the, uh, uh, there's a long pole that goes on this side of the carriage. And we're just going to super glue that into place. And I'm using CA glue here because of the uh, fact that we have these painted surfaces. And uh, I want it to stay firmly attached. And that actually went on easier than I thought it was going to. And I thought I was going to have problems with it. Anytime I use CA glue, there's usually an issue. At this point, we can go ahead and slide uh, the axle assembly through the carriage there. Now I've cleaned up the ends of those tubes and the contact points for the opposite wheel end. Uh, that way we've got plastic to plastic contact. Because right here, I'm not going to use CA glue. Uh, I'm just going to be using the Tamiya Extra Thin. And with Tamiya Extra Thin, it doesn't necessarily glue paint together too well. 
So I just want it to seep into that joint and uh, hold it together nice and firm. And I'm just checking to make sure that the wheels are as square as I can get them. And we're going to let that set up. So with our wheels on, now for these uh, uh, controls. So these are wheels that are used uh, by the crew to shift the, uh, uh, the gun on the carriage for minor adjustments for deflection. And uh, then there's one that goes on the opposite side for elevation. I'm sorry, I got those backwards. The one over next to the sight is actually <laughs> for elevation, and then this one is for deflection, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I think I got that right. We just want to make sure that they're squared up. We use CA glue to put these on, so uh, before that medium glue actually sets up really nice and stiff, we want to make sure that they're, they're not uh, out of alignment there. Next, we're going to put together our ammunition that's in the crates. And for this particular one, uh, it just has um, that kind of square piece with the hole in the center of it that holds the round in place. And we're just going to assemble uh, the other side of the crate. Now, these parts don't have any real... Um, stress or anything on them. Uh, they're just static display of course. I'm just gonna make sure that everything fits together nicely. And what we're gonna do is just use a little bit of to me extra thin to hold that into place. Just a little dab, don't need much. And that'll glue our crate together for us. So there are four crates. And uh, this particular one has the larger round in it, as you can see there. And just need to make sure that top piece is uh, perpendicular to the frame there. And then the, for the shorter round, you can see it has that spacer that we insert into it uh, that's painted yellow. Yeah, those look pretty good. Now for weathering, I'm just going to go with a light dusting. So we're going to use Tamiya's um, um, master weathering set here. Uh, this is the A set. And if you remember during that construction video, I did take little chunks out of the rubber uh, tires here on our wheels. And by applying our uh, weathering uh, well, it's not really a powder. It's it's a little bit sticky. <laughs> I don't I don't know exactly how to classify it, but it does adhere uh, much better than uh, loose pigments do, real dry pigments. Uh, but we're just going to kind of smear that around on there. Uh, that'll dirty up our tire, and then we can use the brush too. Uh, we'll put this on the upper surfaces just to show a little bit of dust settling. Top of the breech block, top of the barrel. Uh, also, we'll do the, the wheels a bit, show some dust there. And now I'm just going to take a number two lead pencil, a graphite pencil, and just kind of polish up the grab handles here uh, on our gun. These are just areas where the crew would be uh, grabbing and uh, the different types of equipment here or moving the gun into position. And that'll wrap up this build. Um, I think AFV Club really knocked it out of the park with their engineering on this kit. All the parts fit together the way they're supposed to and we did manage to keep all the functionality uh, that the designers of this kit intended for it to have. The carriage will slide back and forth on those uh, axle tubes like it's supposed to and the elevation cylinders work and the gun will elevate and depress so it's a really nice kit it really is now it's not a kit for a beginner of course uh, 
But if you like kits that have a lot of parts, this is definitely a kit for you. Uh, the, I think there's over there's over 230 parts. Uh, I think it's somewhere around 242 or something like that. Uh, some of those parts you don't use because they're uh, different wheel options. Uh, but you do have those choices uh, to decide uh, what version of the gun you want to make. And as you can see here, I have the large projectile inserted in the barrel, which makes it a very unique kit. Now, AFE Club does offer uh, two different sets of figures uh, for this gun. Uh, you have your loader and your gunner, and you have the assistant crew too. Um, one kit, well, each kit only has two figures each, so you'd have to get two more kits. Uh, if you wanted a complete crew but it's a very nice kit and it would work very well if you wanted to do a diorama with it there's plenty of accessories that comes with a gun so you wouldn't need to purchase a whole lot um, to make just about any kind of diorama you'd like to have I mean it's complete with aft caps uh, used aft caps uh, and also the caps with the powder charges in them uh, and we have our rounds, so yeah, that's quite a bit, quite a bit there. Now, I hope you enjoyed this series. I fully enjoyed building it, and uh, special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I continue to build these kits and post them online so that you can see uh, what I'm up to. Now, if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, I hope I earned your subscription today. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll see uh, what we're going to be doing next. So guys, uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you in the next one.